Welcome to the Hundredfold Journey. We help people step out of religious bondage and into true abundance. We invite you to embark on a journey, a spiritual journey called the Hundredfold. At a Hundredfold, we are a group of people developing new thoughts, habits, and beliefs to understand our true identity, to live our life purpose and experience the abundant life just the way Jesus did. Our mission is to provide support, encouragement, and resources to help you on your journey. The life you are meant to live is closer than you think. The journey is the destination, and your journey starts now. Good morning, Doug here from The Hundredfold Journey. Thanks again for joining us on this Grace Awakening Network program. We're all on this journey where we're looking to find our true identity, live your life purpose, and experience true abundance. A hundredfold comes alongside of you and provides you with the tools, the resources uh, to help you on that journey. Because a hundredfold is about a group of people looking to find their true identity, and by doing so, finding God's true identity. We have been in a series called the seven I am statements of Jesus, and these are found in the book of John. And we pulled a, uh, a memory verse or a verse that we're working with uh, throughout this series, and it's John 14, 20. And that one says, in that day, you will know that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. <clears throat> when we started this series, we we found that the I am is the name of God, and that's found in Exodus. And if you remember, uh, there was a burning bush in which Moses approached the burning bush, and the burning bush, who was God, told him to go free his people out of Egypt. And when Moses said, who should I tell, him, uh, tell them that sent me? God says, I am that I am. So that is the name of God. And that name that person, that spirit is in us. As you can see, Jesus said, I'm in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. So it's pretty amazing. So that's why the statements, uh, the seven statements of Jesus, which talks about, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, uh, I am the good shepherd, I am the way, the truth, and the life, those can apply to us because the same spirit that was in Jesus is in us. So the declaration is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't apply just to Jesus. It applies to us because the same I am is in us. And if you want to go back to the previous uh, studies, I think that would be worthwhile if, uh, if you're just joining us for the first time. Go back to the intro to this, which talks about that in more detail. So again, thanks for joining us this morning. Here are the verses where this is pulled from. John chapter 14, and I'll just read it. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And that word mansions is abode or dwelling place. And guess what? We are the dwelling place of God. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, that's the key word, where I am, there you may be also. And the, the way that's phrased in the Greek language is, you also I am, where it says, there you may be also, it's actually translated, you also I am. So he's calling out union here. That the same I am that was in Jesus is in us. So again, it repeats itself throughout the book of John. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then here's Thomas. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you do not, uh, and have, sorry, and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. <clears throat> 
So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. All right, so this whole section is just packed full of, of statements about Jesus and questions that Philip have and showing Jesus's identity, who he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, who he was, even to the point where he says, you know, I'm in the father, the father is in, in me and, and, and that they were one. That's Jesus's identity of himself. And part of the reason I'm doing this study is because I want us all to know that that is true for us, that we are one with God. When we see that as our true identity, then we'll be able to do the works of Jesus. And then Jesus even says, and even greater works. But it, it's a change of our mindset. So, uh, so here's kind of a different way of looking at it, because uh, Jesus says, or, or uh, I'm sorry, in John 4, uh, 1 John 4, 16, it says that God is love. So if we maybe interpret this a little differently, which I really like, um, I am equals God, which equals love, right? Because 1 John 4, 16 says God is love. So you could say that love is the way, love is the truth, and love is the life, because God is love. So anywhere there's uh, doubt or questions about where the truth is, where the way is, where true life is, it's all found in love. And then uh, just a quick definition of way, uh, it's a noun, it's also a metaphor, uh, thinking and feeling and deciding. And then truth is also a noun, uh, objectively what is true in any matter under consideration of a truth in reality, in fact, uh, certainty. And then life is a noun, of the absolute fullness of life. So anyways, just kind of a different way to look at that is that love is the way, love is the truth, and love is the life. All right, so what I've been doing the last uh, several uh, weeks in this study is I've been going to the Hebrew words, and what I've found is that there's some nuggets of truth as we go back to the Hebrew language and uh, when we go to the Hebrew word for way, it's actually the word derek. And derek is a way, a road, distance, journey, or manner. And when you look at the spelling of derek, you'll see the Hebrew letters over there. And it spells each of the, the letters uh, have a symbol represented to each of the letters. So you can see that uh, it's the way is in Hebrew, a path, a person, a palm of the hand. And the way I'd like to, to visualize that is, is like you have a palm of your hand that's guiding you, right? It's guiding a person down a path, down a road, or on a journey, right? So you've got the palm of your hand. It's, it's not like a fist, but it's the palm of your hand that's, that's guiding us. Uh, and that's what the spirit does for us. It guides us and directs us. Now let's look at the word truth. And here's the, uh, uh, the Hebrew definition, firmness, faithfulness, and truth. And again, back to the, the Hebrew letters. Uh, there's three Hebrew letters there. And this one is the leader, mighty, and sealed or joined two things, right? So there is a truth that is, it's the leader. It guides us and directs us in a direction. It's the leader. We're following the truth. We're following a leader um, to, to guide us, right? And then that hand is behind us that's, that's guiding us as well. And it's mighty and it's sealed, joined two things. So there's two things, basically the truth from God and our truth, right? And we become one. So there's two things that are joined. So I find my truth in 
the mighty leader who is God, who is love, right? So he's joining us together in truth. And then the last one is life. And uh, uh, this is the word che. And you can see the two, two spellings of or, or Hebrew letters for that. And it's inner room finished. And what I like about this is that, you know, life is, is, uh, is Zoe life. We have abundance. We have uh, fruitfulness. Um, we have health. It, it, it's life. You know, it's, it's uh, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. It's, it's everything that we have. And what's cool, it's in the inner room and that it's finished. There's nothing we need to do. We've been given everything for life and godliness. So we just need to rest because it's finished. And where do we rest? We rest in the inner room. And the inner room is referencing the temple. Uh, and we are the temple of God. We're the dwelling place of God. So we go into the inner room. We don't go outside to find life and external circumstances or yeah, external. We go inward because it's finished. Um, so just to summarize, I kind of put it all together. A path, a person, a palm of a hand where we're following the leader, which is a mighty leader. And he's joining us together so that we're one and we are at rest in our inner room. Because John 16, 13 says, but he, the spirit of truth, which is within us, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. So I just love this, this verse because we have the spirit of God within us and it's the role of the spirit to guide us into all truth. So guide us with a hand and it brings us together and we know that the work is finished so we can rest in knowing we're being guided. Pretty powerful. All right. So what is Jesus saying about himself, right? So he's saying, hey, I'm, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So when Jesus looks in the mirror, what do you think he saw when he looked in the mirror? And that, that's a question for those that are online. What do you think he saw? See the image of his father. Right. Image of his father. Right. Cre who created him. Exactly. And he even announces here, he who's seen me has seen the father. So what he's declaring is, is identity with father. And the Father is the way, the truth, and sorry, way plus truth equals life. So if we want life, then we have to understand uh, where truth comes from, and then that way we will know the way. So the way is what the kingdom of God looks like. Truth is your unbelief does not change the fact that this is true. It is true regardless if you believe or not. And that's how we know it's true because... They're self-evident. We don't have to prove them. They just are. And that's the truths of God. And then life without, uh, with you allowing this to be true for you, then brings life, wholeness, a joy full of uh, love and light. So now the real question is, what do you see when you look in the mirror? So are you in agreement with these verses? What do you see when you see in the mirror? And the answer, and I'll, I'll use quotes, should be, you should see the Father. You should see love, right? And if the definition of God is love, then that's what you should see. Love for yourself and then love for others. That's what was, should be displayed. And anything other than that, then there's a truth that needs to be adjusted. If you don't feel worthy, if you feel that, you know, there's, there's sin or fallen identity, um, there's things that you need to do in order to be pleasing to God. Um, you need to look at all those things. And in fact, the next slide, oh, sorry, one more slide after that. So this is the way, so I asked the question, you know, what do you see when you look in the mirror? 
So now the statement is, is here is what God sees when he looks at you. This is what he sees. He sees perfect union. In Ephesians, he says, we have been raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when he sees us, he sees us sitting and at rest in Christ. And then he also says, as he is, so I am in this world. So the same, the same spirit that was in Jesus is in me. And then John 17 says, Jesus states that God has given us the same glory, you know, not only the spirit, but also the glory so that we might be one with him. So glory means that there's power, there's authority, there's honor. Um, in fact, in other verses, he calls us kings and priests. So we're here to rule and to reign. And he's even given us his glory, a glory like a king, right? So we are. We are here, seated in heavenly places with Spirit, Son, and Father. Pretty incredible when you think about that. And this is the way Jesus thought of himself. That's why he could say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And we should be bold and brave enough to say that. That if you've seen Doug, or if you've seen those that are online, you've seen me. And I know that's a that's a bold statement, but that's the way God sees us. So we just need to come in agreement, come in alignment with that. And anywhere where there's disbelief or rub or that can't be possible, we need to counter that with the truth and say, okay, then what, what do I need to believe or not believe in order for me to think that? And then here's the last one is, uh, second Peter, uh, first Peter says, as his divine power has given to us all. And here's the key there has given that's past tense to us all things. It's not some things. It's not a little bit here, a little bit there. He's given us all things. He's already given it to us that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature. So I am a partaker of the divine nature. I'm divine. That's the way God sees me come into alignment with that. All right. So now we're going to, we're going to talk about maybe some roadblocks that might get in the way of me thinking that I am the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> but here's the interesting thing. I am always the way, the truth, and the life, but which one do I choose? Do I choose from my ego side or the way I think about myself because of, of not renewing my mind, not listening to the spirit that's within me, and maybe the voice of others, particularly religion, which tells us you're a dirty, rotten sinner and, and you're no good and you got to do all these things. Or am I listening to the spirit, which is also the way, the truth, and the life? Both of these are true. Both of these are true. But which one am I listening to and which one reflects the father? So back to the ego side, you know, you need to do in order to be. So in other words, you have to work versus the spirit. You're in rest in how God sees you. The ego says, I will do it my way. And walking from the spirit is you're going to yield to the spirit, to that voice, to that breadcrumb trail, which we've talked about. The ego says, I need to earn God's love in order to and, and be good, do good things. In fact, that's the next line. Do good, get good, do bad, get bad. And the ego says, I don't need God. I can do it on my own. It's a life out of fear. And it's, God calls it darkness. And we're living by the physical, which is the earthly things. Versus God saying, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing to fix. I've given you everything. I'm, I'm dwelling within you. There's nothing that can separate us. That you're holy and blameless in his sight. 
You are you are God, a co-creator. He is in you. You are love. You are light. And you're living by the spiritual, which is internal, right? That's that internal room, right, where rest is. And you're living from heavenly. You're having heaven on earth. So do you see how this would work? You're calling yourself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because you are a co-creator, you have the power to choose which way, which truth, and which life to live. So I'm hoping that those that are listening understand that it is a choice. And the way Jesus said is, I know myself so well, and I'm one with the Father, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Are we all good? Is that making sense? Yes, it's really good. All right, great. Yes. All right, so how did Jesus demonstrate this in his life? Maybe some examples. And the way is rest. Jesus said he only did what he saw the Father doing. He did not have to worry or fear about what to do next. He only did what he saw the Father doing, which is Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. He didn't have to worry. He was living from inside, not the outside. Then the other one is, is the fact that he could do miracles, uh, proved it. Also to overcome the temptations, to do his father's will versus his own will. And that's where in the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, he had the opportunity to pull from the ego side, I'm hungry, and yes, I'll do what you say, versus the spirit side. He was able to overcome those temptations because he was pulling from the truth that of the way his father saw him. And then same thing in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. He taught all about it, and Jesus was faithful in compassion and forgiveness. So now the question is, is how would you demonstrate this in your life? What are some examples? And I'm just going to open open the uh, the mic here for uh, for those that are online. How would you demonstrate this in your life? <clears throat> if you knew you were the way, the truth, and the life, how would you think about yourself? And how would you think about others? So let's let's have a quick discussion about that. So if you knew you were the way, the truth, and the life, how would you think about yourself? and others if i were to know deeply that the statement is true i would think about myself is i am one with jesus and with god the creator and i have the ability and everything that he has created inside of me to come to this world to de to deliver his perfect love through yes. being imperfect human nature or a human in human being you know i would be fearless yes not worry about mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. regardless yes i would not worry about the flush i would not worry about the news i would probably hardly watch the news um I would not really pay attention about my circumstances. Mm -hmm. I used to say so much. I probably shouldn't pay attention about them at all because they're relatively real. And what is really real is my identity. Yes. That is, my, that is really the truth. Who I yes. am in essence as in unity with mm -hmm. God. And yes. if I rest in that, there's power in me. There is that power to surrender to all that I have been given. All I have to do is to use those tools. And you call it love, which is, is a love. The tools is a gift, which is my abilities and my talent and my power that comes from him. The mm -hmm. power to rest in him to be able to deliver that perfect love. And I should just not really worry about anything. 
yeah. and not I lo- judging I love, I, about I love myself how you, or other that, people. Yeah, I love how you made that statement. You deliver love, right? You are the deliverer because you're you're full inside mm. because you know your identity. You're full of love. You're full of life. You're full of truth. And now you're delivering that, right? You're bringing heaven down and you're delivering it to other people, which is exactly what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. It's like we are being delivered. Deliverance, the Bible talks about. Well, we're already delivered, Mm -hmm. but there are people out there that don't think they are because they're living from that other way, truth in life, which is coming from their ego. So instead, we need to be the deliverer of good news that says, no, you are completely whole. You're blameless. This is how God sees you. You are seated uh, with Mm -hmm. Christ, and he's given you everything, and divinity is in you, and there is no separation. So we're delivering that message. And it's like the child of God, he's already giving us that throne and that crown. We are princess of Egypt and the queen, (laughs) you know? Yes. And we, he values us, you know, women as we're rubies and we're mm-hmm. precious. Yes. And I, that's how I would see myself, you know? Love it. Love and it. I think that's how I would think about others. I would try, yeah. I think I would take more of my time of listening to others, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And Absolutely. God will give two years and one mouth. So through listening, and I think I can here and I, I think the problem the most is helping me with my ability to understand about how god has made others so yes. how different from me yep. because and i when only we know look, my my own yep. you know what god's given to me but through listening to others that really helps me understand how god has beautifully wonderfully fears the made of other people how they deliver their love through God. So we come into agreement with the way that God not only sees us, but also the way he sees others. All right. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us here. Thank you for the great comments. Uh, So that concludes the, the, uh, the teaching for today. Next week, we're going to talk about, I am the true vine and a hundredfold is on social media. So reach out on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, and we've got an extensive YouTube channel. So please reach out there. And then this is our QR code to jump on our website. We've got tons of resources on the website. You can always reach out to me at the hundredfold journey at gmail.com. So thanks for joining us this morning and we will see you next time. Bye for now.